a topic that is on the mind of many potential first-time homebuyers and current homeowners in Raleigh, North Carolina, and really in every state in the U.S. is, are we headed into a housing crash because we are in a housing bubble that is going to burst? I truly understand why many are concerned with the idea that we are in a housing bubble and it's going to burst because 15 years ago, wow, 15 years ago, we saw home prices fall and it was very painful. Let me properly communicate this. 2022 is not 2008. Welcome to episode 143 of the Martini Mortgage Podcast. My name is Kevin Martini, and I am a certified mortgage advisor with the Martini Mortgage Group, which is located in Raleigh, North Carolina. However, myself, along with a very talented crew of mortgage professionals, help families in all 100 counties in North Carolina and pretty much in every state in the U.S. too. I'm calling this special episode of the Martini Mortgage Podcast a real estate crash coming soon, not. Opinions are like belly buttons. Everyone has one. Some opinions are based on what one feels, and some opinions are based on data. I believe when you use data to form an opinion, it clears the path so you can make an educated decision based on facts. I also believe educated decisions put you ahead of the crowd. Some folks feel that we are in a real estate bubble and this bubble is going to burst. And when it bursts, it's going to cause a housing crash like we saw in 2008. If you feel this way, with respect, you are incorrect. Let me share with you why we are not in a housing bubble and why we are not heading into a housing bubble. Let me start with when the modern day housing boom started, and that was 1945. World War II ended and soldiers were coming back and they were using their earned VA benefit where they could buy a home. Ever since then and up to today, there has only been one time where homes in the U.S. lost a significant value, and that was in 2008. Why did we see homes lose value in 2008? There were several reasons why homes lost value, and they were from pure speculation to oversupply to very loose lending standards and and many other things. When I say very loose lending standards, I mean back then you could secure a home loan with no income, so a job was not required, hence there was no verification of employment was even asked for. Think about it. You could buy a home or take money out of your home without really being able to qualify or have the ability to repay the home loan. Simply put, Many people that were unable to afford a home were able to buy a home. I feel it is natural to be concerned if today people are able to make their mortgage payments. Since the evil pandemic reared its ugly head, many families had to go into forbearance. In the simplest form, forbearance is a loan deferment where one can temporarily stop making payments. About 4.8 million used forbearance to navigate during the pandemic. And today there are less than 700,000 loans in forbearance as of April 2022. The number of mortgage forbearance has dropped significantly. And it is true. Not everyone will be able to get out of forbearance successfully. However, that number is very low. But remember this, the families that have not been able to recover are not upside down on their home, and they have the ability to sell and retain a gain to get on with rebuilding their life. This is very different than what happened 15 years ago. Aggressive lending standards were one of the components of the housing crisis. And let's look at where we are today. 
Today's lending standards are nothing like they were in the 2000s. Consider home loan product risk and borrower risk. Think of the designer mortgage product risk as all of the loans that were available or are available to people. Back then, there was a NINA, which was an acronym for no income, no asset. Or there was a CISA, which was an acronym for stated income, stated assets. These designer mortgage products have been virtually eliminated from the marketplace. Oh, by the way, oh, by the way, these loan products were not bad products, in my opinion. Crazy statement, Kevin Martini, you say? Not really. When you know these products had a place for the right borrower based on their situation, but these products were sold by some very bad actors to the wrong people. Today, when getting a mortgage, there is a common sense approach to your ability to repay the home loan. Has it gotten harder? Well, yes, if you compare it to 2000s, but common sense is still present with underwriting with the Martini Mortgage Group, and I feel that product risk and borrower risk is balanced today. Don't believe me? Well, Today, we are at an all-time low with foreclosure activity. Sure, the last couple of years, there has been a moratorium in place, and the federal government has stepped in and said, look, we're not going to process these foreclosures during the pandemic. And that was smart. However, back during the housing crisis, it was tragic that over 9 million people went through foreclosure. Listen, Foreclosures are set always going to happen because bad things happen to good people. It is sad, but it is a reality. Today, with common sense lending standards that have been deployed, has led to less foreclosures in the marketplace pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. In other words, with highly qualified or better qualified borrowers, you're going to see less defaults, and we're seeing exactly that, and provides additional confirmation that the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train coming at us, but it's rays of sunshine. I had a conversation with a family I'm working with, and they were concerned about a ton of things, and I understood and appreciated their concerns. They felt like, you may feel today. Let's see if that's the case. They felt that homes are getting too expensive and people are not going to be able to support their debt load and this will cause a collapse in the housing market. I understand the thought process, but the data does not support the thesis because if you look at the data from the Federal Reserve, household debt service ratio for mortgages, and this is basically measures the percentage of disposable income to to the mortgage. So think about it as the total mortgage payments divided by the total disposable personal income. Make sense? Where the household debt service ratio is for mortgage right now is much, much lower than we were in the housing crisis, even lower than we were in the 80s and the 90s. And why is that? Because of rising wages, because of interest rates that we have seen, and because folks that are holding mortgages today are in a much, much better position than they were back in the housing crisis of 2008. So is there a bubble forming or are we in a bubble that is getting ready to burst? No. No, there is not a bubble forming and no, we are not in a bubble that is getting ready to burst. There is not an imminent housing crisis. However, we are right now in a housing boom. I believe when we look back at 2022, three to five years from now, We will call this period of time the good old days of real estate. In other words, 
You will be either very happy that you purchased a home in 2022 or you will wish that you had purchased a home in 2022. To highlight, let us look where we are heading. Home prices are higher and and Raleigh mortgage rates are higher and getting a mortgage today is a process, not an event. And then all the chatter from the Federal Reserve What does this mean for home values? Simply put, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, CoreLogic, Mortgage Bankers Association, National Association of Realtors, Zellman, and the Home Price Expectation Survey are seven entities that the Martini Mortgage Group follows religiously to gauge the future home values. And the average of all seven say that home values in 2022 will go up 9%. Are homes going to lose value? Well, the experts don't see that. Now we are going to see a deceleration of home values in 2022 as compared to 2021. However, deceleration does not mean depreciation. Deceleration simply means that homes are not going to appreciate as fast as they have. I think deceleration is a good thing and is a sign of a healthy, sustainable housing market. If we look back beyond 2022, I believe the best survey to look at is the Home Price Expectation Survey, which is done by Pulsenomics. The Home Price Expectation Survey is not one person's opinion. It is the opinion of a panel of over 100 economists, investment strategists, and housing market analysts, and they are projecting 9% depreciation this year, 4.74% next year, 3.67 appreciation in 2024, 3.41 in 2025, 3.57 in 2026. That is a five-year cumulative appreciation of 26.8%. Oh, by the way, 3.84 3.84 is the average annual growth in home prices from 1989 to 2019. I was purposeful not to add the last two years, 2020, 2021, which has been north of 20% per year to give you some perspective how strong the market has been and will continue to be. Let me wrap this up. The market today is nothing like the market was 15 years ago. I did not mention it, but it is noteworthy to share. There are more households today than there were in 2007. In 2007, there were 116 million households, and today there are over 130 million households. That's 14 million more households looking for homes. In 2007, there were 3.7 million homes for sale on a national basis, and today there are under $900,000, 900,000 homes available for sale on a national basis. More demand, less supply. Yikes! I know there are challenges with inventory, and mortgage rates have drifted upward. And sure, it would have cost you less if you purchased 12 months ago, but I'm reminded of the old Chinese proverb. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Right now is the time to explore your home ownership options as a first time or as a repeat home buyer. Perhaps you are living in a house that you own, but you and your family have outgrown it. Now is the time to upgrade. Perhaps you are renting and paying your landlord's mortgage for them. Now is to the time to explore your options. My name is Kevin Martini, and I'm a certified mortgage advisor with the Martini Mortgage Group. I provide trusted advice with a frictionless process that offers great rates and certainty to you and your family. My number is 919-238-4934. Looking forward to connect. Stay safe out there and wishing you peace and blessings. Now it's time for the disclaimer. 
This material has been prepared for marketing purposes only. This is not a loan commitment or guarantee of any kind. Loan approval and rate dependent upon borrower's credit, collateral, financial history, and program availability at time of origination. Rates and terms are subject to change without notice. The Martini Mortgage Group at PCL Financial is a division of Celebrity Home Loans, and MLS 227765 with a branch address of 507 North Blunt Street, North Carolina, 27604. You can contact Certified Mortgage Advisor and Producing Branch Manager Kevin Martini in MLS 143962 by calling the branch, and that number is 919-238-4934. For a full list and more information on licensing information, please visit www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org or by visiting www.martinimortgagegroup.com. Equal housing lender.